Uh, Minister, hydro-treated vegetable oil is a simple replacement for both diesel and kerosene. And as a renewable fuel, it is a re relatively cheap alternative. But because of its limited availability both here and within the EU, we're not prepared to consider it as a cheap renewable alternative to kerosene to tackle the huge challenge of converting the large number of oil-fired central heating systems uh, in Ireland. Thank you very much, Deputy Ernst. Uh, I understand pr primarily you're looking to discuss the issue of use of HVO in the heating context. My comments might focus on that. Our Climate Action Plan includes a range of measures to address the use of fossil fuel in heating systems and buildings, and the National Heat Study contains the detailed analysis that is informing the development of options, policies, and measures to decarbonise the heating and cooling sectors to 2050. The study considered a number of potential decarbonisation options for a wide range of dwelling and business types. This includes the use of liquid biofuels such as hydro hydrogenated vegetable oil, solid biomass, biogases and other technologies such as heat pumps and district heating systems. The recommendation of the heat study is that heat pumps are the optimal decarbonisation path for heating systems, with district heating also being an option that can be widely deployed. There are, however, there are therefore no current plans to provide supports for HVO, HVO in a heating context. In line with our, common, our Climate Action Plan commitments, my department is working on the development of a heat policy statement and a roadmap for the phase out of fossil fuels in heating as part of the requirement to transition to zero carbon heating by 2050 at the latest. Um, there are, as you know, Deputy, a whole variety of different sectors which will be looking to use HVO as a low carbon solution. I expect we'll have a significant role, uh, particularly in hard to abate areas, but I don't in transport, uh, in data centres or in other applications where we don't have any easy other uh, zero carbon alternative. We do have that in the heating sector and I think it's right for us to focus uh, what is a quite a scarce resource. The volume, uh, while not insignificant, is a minute single or, do two or one or two percentage of our overall fuel availability. And given the scarcity of that resource, it's best to target its use, in my mind, in sectors where uh, it, has, it can have the most impact. Uh, Minister, it's a pity you didn't actually respond to the question that I put to you, and hopefully in your supplementary you will do that, because HVO is both relatively cheap and easy to switch. 90% of HVO could be blended with a 10% kerosene mix uh, in existing oil-fired central heating systems, with the cost of converting the boiler at about €300. Euros. This compares to about €80,000, uh, the cost of a conversion for an air source heat pump to a house built 50 or 60 years ago. However, there are issues with the availability and the lack of any interest in creating a native industry to produce uh, the fuel. And we could produce uh, rapeseed oil to meet the demand for HVO here. And this would reduce biogenic methane emissions from cattle and provide badly needed cash crop uh, for Irish farmers. It should not be beyond the, our capacity here in this country with agencies like Chagask to create such an industry. And will you commit to doing that? First, there's nothing stop, stopping anyone using it in a variety of different applications. The question is, where do we put public money? How do we use policy measures to steer and give a direction into the next two decades as to where we're going? Because heating systems, once installed, are there for a long time. You're right, HVO comes from a variety of different sources. Um, waste oil is one from, from the, let's say, the, the restaurant or other industries, but relatively very small volume. And the international trade volume there is full of uh, concerns about land use, so that too is limited. Uh, there are, I was in Mead uh, last week and met a number of uh, uh, producers who are currently using a lot of tallow and other products which they're converting into HVO and that's an absolutely optimal use. Uh, Whitegate Oil Refinery down in Cork ha have invested significantly I understand and, and are using that resource in a way that's absolutely optimal. Uh, it is true as you say that rapeseed oil can provide another feedstock but again the volumes are very limited. We should be careful here not to provide provide false promise to people that there's an endless supply, that it doesn't have land use implications. And in those circumstances, I think it is best to use technologies in the best location. And it's not that you're completely restricting anything or restricting the use of it, but in terms of what supports we provide or what direction we give, I believe HVO is best used in the transport and industrial sector 
and the heating sector, we have other alternatives that we can promote. Uh, Minister, even based on the current projections, by 2030, the demand for uh, oil-fired central heating will be about 4,000 gigawatt uh, hours. 1,500 gigawatt hours could be uh, provided through the available uh, HVO. That's based on conservative <laughs> figures. But, Minister, the big problem here is that to date there has been an absence of any clear demand for energy crops that would attract farmers to move away from cattle, dairy mainly, but also beef production. And yet we have, one, a shortage of feed crops uh, for HVO production right across Europe. Two, a failure to meet uh, our uh, increased tillage acreage targets. And three, a need to reduce the national herd to meet the government's own 2030 climate targets. Now, I previously did an assessment of converting our three peat fire power plants to 100% uh, biomass that would displace 600,000 tonnes of carbon each year from beef production and generate six, uh, 465 euro per hectare uh, for farmers with a price of carbon at 100 euros per tonne. Um, I, I agree with you. I, I think in, in power generation, the use of biomass uh, will have, does have a role, and maybe to take one example, the main example we have at the moment, the Eden Dairy Power Plant managed by Board Namona, which was designed to be able to 100% biomass compatible, has done exactly that. We've switched away from the burning of peat in it. We are using wood material, 100% now, uh, and I'm told from, I met Board Namona actually on this issue last week, that uh, it's working very effectively. It's using a lot of relatively low-grade wood, waste wood material. Uh, there's huge potential uh, opportunity for us to look now at storing some of the carbon emissions from that plant, and then you have a carbon negative power plant. So I agree with you, that sort of use of biomass in power generation to actually save and reduce emissions does have a real future. Board and Mona are, are on top of that and, and delivering it. I don't think that relates in a sense to the HVO issue because that's a, bio, a, wood, a woody waste material uh, which doesn't impact on the, on the rest of the agricultural sector. I agree with you. I think we are going to have much more biofuel crops grown, the likes of oilseed rape. I think it's a very attractive crop for farmers. I believe it can provide a good break crop. Um, and I believe the sectors that will pay most premium for that in the industrial and transport sectors can and will and should give farmers the incentive to get a good solid uh, 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 return from their work in, in growing it. I think the use in those sectors makes much more sense than in the heat sector.